Ever wonder what an audio circuit sounds like in real life? Well, normally you would have to build it and then listen to it. But turns out there's a better way of doing this. Using the LT Spice simulator. So if you're curious what that is, then keep watching. So I found this circuit in an old book. It's supposed to be an electronic signal generator, sound generator, that creates a sound specific to a violin. And you have your potentiometer with which you can set the frequency. Now, does this thing actually sound like a violin or does it sound like something else? Well, normally you would have to build it and then listen to it. But I'm going to show you how to simulate this thing and actually listen to it. So I built the first part of the circuit, the oscillator, in the LT Spice simulator. And the way I'm going to take the audio sound out of it is by using the wave statement. Now what this does is take whatever you're simulating and outputs it into a dot wave file. So to use this statement, you will need to write out the path of the file you want to save, the number of bits of the audio, the sample rate, and then you can add multiple output channels at the same time. So you can make simple stereo with two channels or even bigger ones. Another thing to take into consideration when using this type of command is that the signal that you are trying to write needs to be between plus and minus one volt or amp. So you cannot go with any sort of amplitude. You will need to make a circuit that adapts your output voltage into this range and if possible to center it around zero. So you can use simple capacitor or something like that. So let's try it out. I've written here my statement. I will output into the noise out file at 16 bits and 44.1 kilohertz sample rate. So this is my output signal. Looks quite weird. No idea if it's good or not. We can analyze its FFT signature. Just like the book said, the signal will have a lot of harmonics, but we still have no idea what it sounds like. So to find that out, we need to actually play out the file that we generated. And that doesn't sound really good now, does it? So at this point, you would have built a circuit that makes a horrible sound. So what do you do? Well, in real life, you can play around with the values, but that takes a lot of time and effort. And also you need a large number of components. But by simply playing around with the components in the simulator, for example, change the value of C1 from 500 picofarads to 5 nanofarads. And now if we look, the signal still looks roughly the same, but if we listen to it, it sounds a bit different, doesn't it? So we can change how the circuit sounds like by changing one of its components. So what else can you do with this dot wave statement? One of the voltage source types that I showed last time was this time dependent single frequency FM modulated voltage source. And we can check what this would sound like if it would be working in the audio range. So I set it up to have a carrier frequency of 500 Hz and to be modulated at 20 Hz. We can look at it and see how the frequency varies, but we can also listen to it. Sounds like a nice siren. Another thing we can play around with are circuits that condition a certain input sound. For example, we can use as an input source a WAV file, process it, and then output it as another WAV file. So what I've got here is a basic distortion circuit. I'm taking the input signal from an audio WAV file, actually asked a good friend of mine, Dan, to play some chords on a guitar, and I'm trying to ruin it. So by creating a distortion circuit. Now with this you can play around to see exactly what sort of distortion actually suits your needs best. So we have here symmetrical distortion, we can try out some asymmetric distortion. So right now only one half of my signal is being distorted, the other half is left untouched and we can play around with all sorts of combinations. So this way you can try out to see exactly what is best fit for you. And of course you can listen to all of these. Now the simulation takes a while since we're working with very large files, but it's much faster and simpler than to actually build the circuit. Now another interesting feature is you can actually import more than one WAV file at the same time. So right now I'm using the same file but import it twice and I'm adding a bit of a delay effect. So with this circuit you can see what combining two signals with a certain delay in between them sounds like. And you can also play around with mixers and all other such type of circuits. Now if I put in a 50 millisecond delay it will sound like there's two instruments in here. If I make the delay much smaller, let's say free, and rerun the simulation, then you will start to get some new sounds coming out of your initial signal. 
Now the final thing I've played around with is generating more than one wave file at the same time. So right here I put two signal filters, a high pass and a basic low pass. This will give you a much better understanding of how these circuits work. You can look at graphs and maths all you want, but if you don't hear the circuit you won't really understand it. So right now I'm generating both the high pass filtered and the low pass filtered signals from my initial signal at the same time. And of course this, these aren't all the applications. You can do whatever you want with these dot wave statements. The only limit is your imagination. So hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.